I'm Francis Kraven. No, we're not doing it that way. Check. Get yeah, right these. <laughs> this is actually, uh, we have a memory mode at the college I teach at. And uh, switched on. Spent quite a bit of time going through absolutely every component and brought it back up to speed. And it's doing great. How long ago was that? This was a couple years ago that you finished the work and it's still and being it's solid. hanging on. That's good. You have to hit the tune button a lot. Yes, essential for a memory mode. Yeah, Juno 16, you know, one of the most desirable poly synths right now. They're not, you know, as expensive as a memory mode, but everybody wants a Juno 60 because they sound great, they're super reliable, uh, really easy to repair if anything goes wrong with it, which things hardly ever go wrong with Juno 60. One of my best friends in high school had a Juno 60 and I had a Poly 6 and we would, uh, uh, we would, we, we'd always do it the shootout. <laughs> Who won? I, I'm still a Poly 6 guy. I love yeah. the Juno 60, and it does a very specific sort of <laughs> early 90s like rave and house sound. Yeah. Um, but the Poly 6 has that ensemble effect that makes it super water. So yeah. it's just closer to my heart. You can definitely tell it's DCOs on the Juno 60, especially yeah. when you put them back to back. Yeah. yeah. When are you going to get into this? Um, uh, when I have time. <laughs> We have a uh, no coast class coming up with like a special deal on the no coast if you want. The, I actually may come in for that because West Coast is really really interesting to me. Uh, from that's one of the biggest draws for modular for me. Like digital yeah. oscillators, I use soft synths, you know. Yeah. But in terms of, of new wave, new forms of synthesis, mm -hmm. West Coast is uh, is attractive. And I like I like the fact that it's all in one unit. You don't have to fulfill it yourself. Well, the cool thing about digital oscillators in this format is the amount of control you get with it. And it's a really, I mean, you get that amount of control in the, in the box, right? In the computer, right? Maybe more so. But it's physical here. And you can do things that you wouldn't do in software because you're faced with these set of options. So it is like a digital oscillator in a different realm. And it's interacting with MIDI analog stuff. And, but I always want to hit. I want to hit save. I really want to hit, <laughs> it sounds yeah. really good. I want to hit save. Recording. You do make the best presets. That's so right. real hard. Oh. <laughs> so yeah. So the, but the, I mean I get it. It's just like a, I, I think I just don't have enough time. Yeah. You no. Know, it's like it's definitely if you want to if you want to do it right, you have to have the time to sit there and actually learn what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, we have a uh, reissue Odyssey, the smaller one, and then an original Mark III Odyssey that is in such good condition that people always say, is this, this the reissue, That's right? actually what I thought it was. So. <laughs> but you can tell because uh, this has the old style body with the hangover keys um, and uh, the new Korg ones, they only went with this plastic shell. Um, how do you think they sound compared to each other? You know, it's interesting. Since this is pristine. The Mark III, this Mark III, I can make the same exact sound on the cork. Okay. But if we had a Mark I sitting here, or a Moog ladder filter, you know, right, an Odyssey right, II, right. Um, then this would not, would not be able to do it. Even switching the filter? Yeah. Yeah, the filter characters are different on this, but they don't match up with a Type 1, you know, Type 2, Mark 1, Mark 2 filter um, with the original Odyssey. But the Mark 3? The is... Mark 3 is like pretty spot on. Yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed. If I was, you know, I, my favorite one's the, the white face, the Mark 1. Right. And something about that filter and the way that sense sounds is tough to replicate on the consoles. Uh, Pro One, we did that. There's that turbo MIDI CPU we added to that. Um, it's great. Yeah, Alpha Juno 2. Um, we, we occasionally see these for repair. This one we went through, I think we replaced some buttons. This one's super clean though. I think we have the PG controller for it. Yes, the Raven. We actually had a couple Ravens uh, from a customer who had all the quasi MIDI stuff. He was quasi MIDI obsessive and then uh, traded it all in and went modular. So, um, so we have a, a Raven currently. It does rave. <laughs> Boutiques are great and they just keep getting better. I mean, I think the SH-01A is maybe the best one and uh, I love the 08 and the 09. They're just really true to the originals and they're a tenth price. So. You know, the discrepancies between the original and the new one is just kind of irrelevant because it's, you know, it's What do you think of the SEO2? The SEO2 is great. Yeah, I mean, every, like, every time I hear it in the room, and I, I'm not, I, I don't see someone playing it, someone comes over and plays it, 
every time I, I hear it, I just, I'm like, what synthesizer is that? Really? I'm always like impressed by the sound, and I'm curious, it makes me curious every time, like, what, what, what am I listening to? And it ends up being this every time, and it's, I'm always impressed by the flexibility and the range of, uh, of sounds you get out of it. The XMOD section does a lot of that sort of yes. modular thing that you're talking about, because audio rate modulation, and it's got some really interesting estimations on it. Yeah. It sounds beautiful. There's an SEO one over there, though. Yeah, the Electron is super. I, I love the new uh, designs for the Electron stuff, new capabilities. Um, very, you know, Digitax has been very popular. I can't keep these in stock right now. Um, we're in love with that. And it's, it's affecting the market for things that's like the NPCs, you know, those the old 2000 XLs. We're going up, and then Digitax came out, and people were like, we want Digitax. You know? so it's, it's a really great product. People are in love with it right now. Um, using it for all kinds of stuff just drums or you know, just sequencing, a little bit of both. It's great. What genres? Is, there, is it just across all genres, or are there any specific genres that are... No, it's really uh, like across genres. Really? I've been really impressed with it. Huh. So it's picking up the, the sort of MCP, MC, MPC purist crowd? Yeah, especially the, you know, the people who were getting into the older MPCs because they were less expensive. You know, just thought about it, like, it seemed, when it came out, it seemed like a better option, I think, um, than getting an older MPC. Uh, it's just more powerful, and the price is so good. So. The new MPC is crazy, though. I mean, this is like, you know, a full computer. What a good, like, centerpiece for, for a stage show. I, I've, so, I've, I'm not super familiar with the latest of kind of it's, stuff. It's incredible. Um, I had the original MPC, though. The sound, Novation's, you know, sound design is fantastic. I always love Novation's sound design, and this is no exception. It's that, uh, that base station sound that, you know, is just huge. <laughs> this is our ever-changing rack. We always have different weird stuff in this rack. And uh, sometimes there'll be nothing in it, and then we'll get a ton of stuff, and it'll be all kinds of random crazy weirdness. My, my mini doc is finally gone. Yes, my mini doc's gone. We have another one coming out soon. Um, yeah. I love the mini dog. Yeah, if you're going to synchronize old school drum machines, um, it's kind of the only game in town. I wish we saw more of the, the later mini dogs with MIDI. That was a, a nice one. Black. Right. Uh, I actually I actually found that you could, if you stuck MIDI into the, the rolling bin, yeah. it would kind of work. You got that to work? <laughs> Oh, they're very resourceful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, it's a din jack. Oh, yeah, the Adorable CZ 1000. <laughs> Phase distortion synthesis, you know, it's... You have eight stage envelopes and you have one, two, three, four, five, six of them, <laughs> you know? It's, uh, you can do the weirdest stuff with it. I've heard people create outrageous patches. Things that sound like hard sync, I didn't know it could do. Just there's, there, there are patches for this EZ series that will blow your mind. And, uh, and you won't believe it's a, a CZ. Using Sonic TS-10. Yeah, JX3P, we, it's one of those things where we don't see a synth in repair for a while, and then all of a sudden we have five of them. <laughs> so we just finished up you know, several JX3Ps at once. Yeah, well, and, do you have five PG channels? Uh, only four. <laughs> wow, but you do have a bunch of PG. How much? Yeah. So what's the what's it going for the pair? For the pair, uh, fully serviced, uh, $9.99. Um, you know, which I think we're for less, but you know, very clean, fully serviced, going to work great. And it's still so much less than you know, Juno 106. And to me, this is the closest you can get to a Jupiter 8. Right. You know. Right. And it's got the, but it's got the DCOs, which means it's more stable tuning-wise. Yeah. Um, so rich, and having those two DCOs bouncing off each other. And it's the IR3109 yeah. filters on it, right? Which are the same as the Jupiter and the Juno. So it's got the same filter systems. Yeah, the S50 um, came with a bunch of hilarious sound effects uh, discs, and uh, we've just been having a lot of fun with it. It's, uh, it's a good sampler. Yeah, I, I don't have uh, a lot of experience with keyboard samplers, but... Uh, does the video out still work on it? Oh yeah, yeah, the video out always works, and that's always fun. I, I'm pretty sure we have the mouse hanging around somewhere. Yeah, we can look it up. <laughs> yeah, the M1. It's the uh, Seinfeld, you know, uh, slap bass sound. Uh, 
we have a, a friend in Japan who's always sending us M1, so we have a, a regular uh, M1 on the, on the floor to sell. And house pianos and organs. Yeah, exactly. Yo, Dave Smith Instruments is making the best poly sense right now. Um, Especially for the price. There's other great polysynths out there. But um, but Dave Smith is just, you know, the sounds there, they're so reliable, they're so well built. Um, they're just terrific all around synths. If you're going to have like one synth, it should probably be a Red 2 or one of these guys. Uh, multi Mogs, we fix a lot of multi Mogs. <laughs> they have a bunch of weird, quirky issues that we solve. DX7? Yeah, we almost have DX7s around because they sold a million of them. <laughs> and something that's used very much today still, uh, the FM sound. We do a lot of uh, work on OBXAs. Um, OBXAs? We always have at least one or two on, on the shelf. Not necessarily for sale, but for repair. Um, and sometimes for sale. Brilliant. I'd like to have them more. What do one of those go for now? What does the next day go for? Um, I'm not sure if this one is priced at right now. Um, they were in the you know, mid 3000s for a long time. I think they might be bumping up a little bit. <laughs> uh, but you know, our rack of uh, things to pick up here. Is, uh, oh, we've got a DS8. An old Korg DS8. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we worked on that. This OBX, you know, we're really good at Oberheims. And we've been seeing a lot more OBXs lately. Um, Seal. I never want to see one of these again. Is that the, <laughs> is that the DK600? Yeah, yeah. Um, they sound really cool because they're all SSM based. Six yeah. voice poly since They were like competition for the Junos and the poly sixes and all that, but yeah, they're just terribly built. Um, and then you've got a Lin 9000 below that. Lin 9000, also something very difficult to work on. In fact, these two pieces are going back unrepaired <laughs> because uh, uh, we can't get schematics for this. I think uh, Bruce uh, Forat has them all. And you've got my all-time favorite, Polysynth. Yeah, Jupiter 6. I think we... Yeah, this one uh, belonged to a customer. We just did this uh, for customer. Uh, I think we have Michael Steins in here somewhere. Oh, you've got a super quartet down here too. Yeah, yeah. We don't we Brilliant. don't ever have to fix those. Those are usually pretty bulletproof. Those were sleepers for the longest time. I know. I'm sad people discovered them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's a Juno 106 and a 707. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yep. Is that an original EPS? I take it. Yeah. Uh, yeah we have a bunch of echoes here. Uh, 201. This is a Korg stage echo. You know, a 501 space echo. We fix a lot of tape echoes. Uh, and another bunch of Juno 106s. What's this? This little suitcase here. Uh oh. With a setup like that, it's got to be something really cool. I think it's probably just, you know, something dumb. Let's see what's in here. Oh. Oh. It, every time I'm in an antique store or a thrift store, I go to the suitcase section. And I'm like, that should be one the of main these, for Koi. One of these has got to be. You know, has, has hasn't it ever, happened has, yet. It hasn't happened, <laughs> hasn't happened yet. Uh, wow. But yeah, we just service this. Uh, use a little cleanup still, but uh, that is amazing. We do a lot of synthes, buttons. Oh, you've got an MV8000 down there too. Yeah. Those were brilliant machines. Those MV8000s. Yeah. What? Oh, man, super powerful. What? The MV8000. I have a lot of customers who still use like them. Like down all the way at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. The thing it's right like, here. Like you know, Roland's MPC. Nice. Yeah, this is uh, one of the old Maestro theremins, the, and we actually oh built these antennas to uh, to spec. It, it came without its antennas, so we added those. They look really nice. Yeah, custom metalwork, huh? Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> And that was back when Tom Overheim was at Maestro. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, six years. This is like, uh, you know, some deep storage and uh, future projects. We got our shelf full of polymotes. I think we probably have like six or so. That's insane. Yes, we can. We do great polymotes. Um, MXR flangers. But, uh, getting the polymotes to Tom. cooperate. Yeah, Tom. Right behind it, there's a EML 400401. Oh, know. no way. Yeah. We can kind of pull out that lid if you want. Yeah. We got our 200, 300 combo down there. 
Uh, we uh, and t and I've never seen. I said this yesterday. I've never seen two four forties in the same room at the same time. <laughs> exactly. They both belong to the same guy. We're fixing one for him. And, <laughs> and, some uh, guy. Some guy just hoards them all. Yeah. He he had an SP twelve. Two. Uh, you know, LM one Lindrums. He had uh, and the Simmons SDS seven. Yeah. God, that's, that's such a legend. Yeah, that's the two lens sequencers. Yeah, those are his two lens sequencers. That's what's in the Lin 9000. Right, I had a couple right. Lin 9000s. I had a Lin. That was my that was my first big boy drum machine. It's just next to that. Odysseys, exactly. AX73s, DX7s. How are the A6s holding up? The A6s are uh, having some problems. They're all developing some issues uh, with their, their main CPU chip. And is this an AX80? Yeah, AX80. <gasps> yeah, we always have is that the little fluorescent? Yeah. Meters above yeah. everything? Yeah. It's like the Knight Rider. Yeah. It's, it's a <laughs> Did it have an S612 port on the back of it as well, or was that just yeah. the 60s? Yeah. So the 80, the 80 could could work with the S612. That's the same. Yeah. Same concept. Awesome. Prop 600. Oh, you've got a kitten. Octave. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. That kitten's gonna need some work, but uh, we brought a lot, brought back a lot of cats and kittens. Let's see what else is back here. It's interesting. An N1. This is a Moog Sonic 5. Um, Or Sonic V, if you will. Fairlight oh, yeah, monitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do a lot of Fairlights. Um, oh, Prophet 2000. Sampler. That's another legendary, that's an amazing sounding sampler. Yeah, we have a uh, 2002 plus around here somewhere in the rack. It was like their last sampler. You might be hiding right now. Oh, wait, here it is back here. You see it back there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Those were. It's those a mini, though. <laughs> Those are such great sounding. I'm gonna clean up back here right now, part of the mess. Um, <laughs> we're really good at our quadras, which is good because they're always broken. <laughs> How much did the quadra go for? Because that was always a fantasy synth of uh, mine. Yeah, four or five thousand. Uh, really? That it's, high? It, it's on the Polymoog level as far as like re reliability. Mm, okay. <laughs> it's an LM1 we're gonna bring back for a customer. Lindrum below it. Um, yes, you, I thank you for not calling it the LM2. I know better. <laughs> yes. Well, LM2 out of convenience, you know, but uh, so people know which Lindrum you're talking about. Emulator 2s we, we work on as well. Yeah, you guys fixed my emulator too. Oh, okay, great. Oh, yeah, here's our. Sanger Parker, very rare expander synthicon, so no keyboard, original Tolex case and everything. You can connect it to another synthicon or do a sequencer, you know, external keyboard, whatever you want. But yeah, bringing that one back. And you got, got a lot of MXR stuff too. Yes, yeah, we have a pretty full array, 70s so. MXR. Mono polys. Uh, very reliable synth, but uh, the uh, key bed always has to do those key contacts. Another Jupiter, as usual. Another Jupiter 6? Yeah, yeah, I think that one's fine this time. With the Poly 6 underneath it. Yep. Yeah, I always have Poly 6s because of the CPU board. Michael Stein, that's Michael Stein's Jupiter mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Uh, one of our techs, uh, Krumar DS2, that he plays on stage. That's courageous. <laughs> Decent live synth shows in this town, or oh yeah, yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah the electronic music scene here is better than it's ever been. A lot of variety. Anymore, I'm always in the studio. Uh, we're doing a lot of T8s this year. The Wave, Waldorf Wave. Probably won't ever have to work on one of those again, but uh, because there's not, there's not there's only two in the world, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's an Oscar taken apart there on the bench. Yeah. Um, that's been fun to work on. This is a T8, right? Yeah, we've been working. I think we've had, I don't know, like six. Oh T8s yeah, there's this T8. Year. The. <laughs> no. No, if you want to see it. Okay, boss. God. <laughs> this is like Fatar torture porn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we need them. And the uh, mugs down there in the corner. We always have a few memory moves we're working on. God, these memory moves. 
brilliant. You have three of them. That's insane. Yeah. And the BX7. Oh, it's a BX7 too. Yeah. Three there. On the bottom there is an EML 500. I think we have all the oh my God. early EML products right now. What, so what would a restored MG1 go for? Uh, we usually uh, modify the MG1 as well. Right, so we sell them like, uh, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars, but they're all modified. Pulse width modulation, octave drop, individual modulation for the oscillators. Right. So you can envelope the sync or modulate the sync with the LFO. That kind of stuff's really helpful. It's uh, this PVC and rubber piece. There's no other synthesizer built like this. Yeah. Really great. So you could set another keyboard on top of it and not hurt your knobs. <laughs> Brilliant design. <laughs> that never occurred to me that that's why they did that. It never occurred to me. No, me neither. That's... It's one of, I just had the moment of eureka of like, uh, now I feel dumb. And it also has like these weird additive kind of oscillators. Yeah, yeah, they're, um, they're, are they wave tables or are they just digital? I remember I you, could, you, could, you could change the harmonics of them with the keyboard yeah. somehow. And that's why you could set something on top of it because you had your memory that's accessible from your keyboard. Right. You, know, you just, you know, you have the button combination. What and would you fit on? What would you put on top of it, though? What would fit into that narrow <laughs> slot? Right. <laughs> Another Oscar? <I> know. <laughs> you know, it's funny to me. This uh, a lot of the uh, presets and stuff in this sound just like a Casio from the same era. Really? Yeah. And and I'm I I always wonder why you know why would anyone want such a powerful Casio? But uh, there is no you know Casio sound more powerful. <laughs> but the, <laughs> the but filter's but amazing. Yeah, the Casio filter's really analog cool. filters. Yeah, yeah exactly. they're, they're multi-mode too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know someone in town with a Krumar Spirit, but um, he sadly he hasn't brought it in. I, he used to bring it, we used to have synth meets before we opened the shop. Right. We'd have synthesizer parties, everyone would bring all their synths, and he'd bring out the Spirit, and that's the only one I've ever gotten to play. I've never even seen one through the shop in almost eight years. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't even seen one for sale in so long, they're so rare, but... Um, Tell, tell the world incredible. a little bit about the spirit, because the spirit is a great. Story. It's magical. It's it. I you know I can't believe it sounds as unique as it does. It seems like okay, you have your basic you know mono sense setup, but somehow it's just I don't know how to explain it. It sounds so different. Could it be because of who designed it? It could be. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it was designed <laughs> by Bob Moog. Yeah. 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 He mm -hmm. he after after Moog closed, he uh, did a project for Krumar called the Spirit. But yeah, someone in town has one, and I hope to see it again someday. <laughs> it's, it's been a while. Yeah, 